what younger players in the league reached out to you that it caught you off guard of their maturity and their willingness to learn? Man. Because I know you have a bunch. Yeah. Um, Kyrie. He came and stayed with me in Seattle. He was last year in Boston, so probably three or four years ago. And we worked out every day for a month. But I was surprised to, to hear from him. And then what's crazy is he told me this story if he used to come watch me in Seattle when he was 11 years old in the Pro-Ams. And he'd be the kid dribbling and doing stuff in between timeouts. So you never know who's Bro, watching. that was little kids. Yeah. You're like, if I hit this shot, someone's watching. They're going to think that I'm great. Yep. So wait, what was, was like, everything. what was a typical day of Kyrie staying at your house? Like, what, how did we it? We didn't stay at my house, but came and stayed in the city. Yeah. He had his own setup. But a typical day is we would meet at different gyms, University of Washington or Seattle Pacific, whatever. Work out, I make sure I had all the smoothies, all, all the vibe was right for everything. If he wanted to go work out and not shoot that day or not work out that day, I have a gym set up for him. But he had family up there as well. How he, many he shots were you up? Oh, a bunch. We had, we had some, if there was ever footage of me and him going at it, oh my God, it was crazy. Who won? He'd do a move. We actually, at the end of it, I think he won six wins, I had six. Yeah. Yeah, not one-on-one. -on -one. The one-on-one, -on -one, it was- So we need a game 13 then. Yeah. We did need game 13. Yeah. Got a court right here. Something else I've never said. I was supposed to be Uncle Drew. But the what movie. happened? I was supposed to be Uncle Drew. He what hit happened? me with Uncle Drew with you. What happened? I just got traded to Minnesota. And Thibodeau, when we were going to shoot, Thibodeau had off-season workouts. I didn't want to be Hollywood coming from L.A. What's that mean, off-season workouts? You know, Thibodeau ain't got no off switch. Like, they're doing training camp type workouts during <laughs> September, that area, August, September area when y'all were shooting. That's real? Because y'all were shooting, you shot in Atlanta, right? No, what I'm saying, they used to make y'all work out in the summer? Yeah, Tibbs. And I'm going to a new team, <laughs> and I'm like, T <laughs> Shaq. Shaq's like, summer workout, what's that? Yeah, once I leave, What I'm is out. that? Yeah. That's oh, when yeah. Shaq was growing his hair, jumping in pools. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> yeah. Right. Somewhere. But no, nah, so I was supposed to be an Uncle Drew as well. Growing up in Louisiana, well, not growing up, but going to college in Louisiana, I seen the Pistol Pete tapes where he used to, his dad used to drive and he'd be he'd dribbling out the car. And like he doing all these drills. So ask White Chocolate what he used to do. He used to put weights on his on his hands and dribble. Were there any special techniques that you use? Because, like, like you said, you have a bag. So, give me, give me some techniques for the kids that's watching stuff that that you used to do. So, you in Louisiana? I'm in Seattle, and it rains a lot. In the rain, I'm outside. You know how they'd be like, "Oh man, if you don't work on your game, there's somebody out there in the country outside right now." It was me. And in Seattle, that's why I dribble. So, I've never done a cone drill in my life. But the rain, the snow, I'm I'm learning how to dribble in the rain, and the snow. So I'm like, if I can control the ball in this in these conditions. It's easy when I get in the court. So that was the, the best training method I ever had was dribbling in the rain because the ball gets slippery, it gets slick, and you're still trying the same moves. And you don't have total control of it, but you learn to how, to how to control different things, flow, pace. That's the most Seattle I've ever heard of in yes. my entire life. Yeah. I was in the rain. I was. I was. I, I got... see the way that you parent JJ, and I see the way that like you teach, and I'm curious who taught you. Because it sometimes it sounds like you're self-taught, like you're out there on the court. But then I also know that you probably had like amazing teachers that like instilled. Like, how much was just you, and how much was somebody else? It was both. But I was like, even now, like I've always paid homage to OGs. But what I learned about myself is I love being around older people. I love knowledge. I love wisdom. I love to learn. You know what I'm saying? So I used to always be the dude that would go skip class sometimes and go in the barbershop and just listen to the old guys talk. And I got some knowledge from them. So my whole community, if you ask anybody about me when I was a kid, they'd be like, oh, he had some candy in one hand and a ball in another. That was me. Like, I, I, to a T, I always had a basketball with me. I used to sleep with my basketball. Literally, I'm sleeping here. The ball is right here. Mm. Every car I own right now, I got a ball in it. So I've just always, <clears throat> it became one with me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, when you walk, you're not thinking left foot, right foot. You're just walking. When I'm dribbling, I'm never thinking about it. It's like breathing. It. It's breathing. I can lose the ball and it put me into another move. So... Not thinking about it. When I did my two crossovers, I thought about it before I did it. Yeah. Your see. moves, like the moves that you did, like the one you just posted, did you actually think about that before no. you did? Did you say, okay, I'm coming down, I'm going I'm to give it to him this way and then throw behind the back? No. Like you just, and you can respect this because you know how you rap. I just freestyle. Seriously? Yeah. I, if I was a boxer, I'd be a counter puncher. All right. You so how you twice, know? I'm do it three times. Okay. So how you know to bring your hand out? Like, like that move you did, I would have to say, okay, I'm going to go this way. Throw it behind the back, and if he come, I'm gonna do it again and then shoot the jump. Like, I would like have to. Shack, I'd be the like, way I set it up, you've never even seen me do it. 
Yeah, I never seen you do that. You know what I'm saying? Like you never seen me do. I'm just thinking this on the on the fly. To move on, Kirk Heinrich. I'm literally coming down the court. Is that the around the back one? This one I went over his oh, head. Oh, you went over his head, yeah. And I'm thinking, like, damn, we played. I'm thinking this from I got the ball. Okay, we played together. He knows behind the back. What am I gonna do? Boom, and it just happens. That's why you never seen it again. I've never practiced it. But I just feel like with a ball, I can do anything. Cause I like you said, I've kind of mastered that's my flow. Mm -hmm. I've mastered my flow of of randomness and being, you know, instinctual. Who's on your Mount Rushmore of ball handlers? Ooh. Not including ask yourself. A follow up question. Not including yourself. Kyrie. Okay. Isaiah. Which original Isaiah? Isaiah original. original. Detroit Piston. White chocolate. You better have to say white yeah, chocolate. Yeah, white chocolate. You're usually the fourth, so I'm curious who you put in this spot. Allen Iverson. Mm. I'm doing him four. No Tim Hardaway? Timmy was cold, but yeah, AI just cold. mesmerized. You asked Shaq, uh, and he told a story about Kareem insulting him, and it motivated. Have you ever been insulted, and it stuck with you for a very long time? Insulted? Or motivated, or someone's critique. You heard you guys' Gary Payton story. I've never yeah. told. My name's ringing in Seattle. I'm in high school. We see Gary Payton at the mall. He has Marty, Trev, all his boys, about 10 people. I'm in high school. I'm with his nephew and a friend of mine. We see him in the food court. It is packed. Gary Payton, it's the glove. It's after they went to the finals. And I didn't know this, that he had been hearing about me. So he goes down the line. He goes to my one friend. You terrible, I already played you. He points to his nephew. You ain't shit, I already beat you. And he points to me. I've never said hello to him. You, you come see me because I'm hearing about all these moves and all these tricks and shit you're doing. This is what we going to do. The bigger the crowd, GP gets louder and louder. Shaq mm -hmm. knows this. Louder and louder. We're going to play one-on-one. -on -one. If you beat me, I'll give you a million dollars. A real million, not the Shaq million. I'll give you a million dollars. If I beat you, I want you to walk around naked in your neighborhood. I'm running around running my trucks. Because I hear about all the shit you're doing. Let's ride. And he pointed like Denzel and Malcolm X. And when he went like this, all 15 people in the entourage went that way. I didn't back down. I'm like, all these people came through. Ah, they're screaming, going crazy before social media. That was my introduction to Gary Payton. So that, that was motivation. What happened? Did you play? We never played, but when I went through the draft a year later, I went and stayed with him in Oakland. And then he worked me out, and uh, that was dope. Just Man. the experience of GP, like a big brother. He was always on my list. Of? Dudes you don't touch up? Leave him alone. You told me that, Shaq. It's Leave a vaunted list. To Leave you, it's Allen Iverson, it's Vince Carter, and That's White great. Chocolate. And White Chocolate. People Shaq. he liked to watch. When I first saw Shaq, of course, everybody knows about Shaq. But when you see him in person, and he was last. This is like the vaunted Lakers, and he's last. And he oh, you're talking out. about like coming out to coming start out the game. To, to start the game. And they start playing the Undertaker music. Dum, dum, da, dum, he's dum, just walking dum, to the music. How old were you? 19. And I, I can't stop looking at him. I keep looking. I'm like, this is the yeah, But that's not the first time I met you. When was the first time we met? You and a couple guys were standing outside in LA, oh, yeah, yeah, and y'all couldn't yeah, get in. That's true. That's a fact. And they couldn't get in. That's and I walked fact. up, and I was like, let him in. They're like, Shaq was like, what'd I say? Let him in. And they let him in. That's a fact. That's a uh. true story.